Last Saturday night, I received a call from the man police label suspect number one in the Jennings 8 murders. Frankie Richard said, I need to speak to you. That was Saturday night. Sunday morning, he was dead. When you're poor in the country and nothing's in the budget, you can try your hardest, can't buy you justice. Want to jump in the truck and go and grab the musket. That's what you call buy you justice, buy you justice, buy you justice. Who really knows the truth and can you really trust it? Buy you justice, buy you justice. You can try your hardest, can't buy you justice. On February 1st, Frankie Richard, infamously a suspect in the serial murder of at least eight women in Jennings, Louisiana, sent me the following text. Good morning, old friend. I want you to know that I just got out of jail and I'm staying at my daughter's house in Jennings. And later in the conversation, he said, I'm doing as good as I can. They tell me I died three times. I'm in a wheelchair, but not for long. After some physical therapy, I'll be all right. Frankie Richard died in his sleep on Sunday, March 22nd, 2020. On March 17th, he had sent me another text. Hey buddy, I'm out of physical rehab and I'm coming to Baton Rouge in about a week. We need to talk. The night before he died, he wrote, Say, big man, I made it to Baton Rouge. Give me a call. On the phone, he told me he was anxious to get back to work writing his book. He said the world needed to know the truth about Jennings. I told him I couldn't meet him right away. He said, don't worry, we've got time. I've got money coming and plan to buy a house out here. That night, on his niece's couch in Denham Springs, Frankie Richard died in his sleep. I first met Frankie on a Monday afternoon, July 29th, 2019. After weeks of discussion through social media, we met at a Denham Springs rental property off Eden Church Road. Frankie had lived there secretly in seclusion for over a year. I got out of Jennings after my mother died, he told me. I lived in Morris for a while, but the press found me there. I moved in with family here and told everybody I was in Baton Rouge. Life got peaceful, he said, when people couldn't find me no more. Frankie described his health as bad, saying he did not know how much longer he had to live, and he wanted to get the truth recorded while he still had his faculties. Frankie told me he wanted to document his knowledge of the unsolved murders and the events that led up to them, including all he knew about the parish's dirty cops, prostitution, organized crime, and the route of a drug cartel that extended from Louisiana across Texas and into the Midwest. Before that first meeting ended, I agreed to help Frankie document what he knew ultimately organizing and editing his recollections into a manuscript. Two weeks later, though, Frankie sent me a text saying he had moved back to Morse. He assured me that he planned on continuing work on the book, but he said he had to take care of some business first. In Morse, he bragged to friends and family about the book project. And then, according to local police, he overdosed on tainted heroin. A relative of Frankie's told me that week, he started running his head. That's why they gave him the bad dope. He thinks they won't take him out because of what he knows. 
he's just been lucky so far. According to an affidavit dated September 11th, 2019, Morse police responded to a 911 call that evening. A woman saying Frankie had gone into convulsions. Arriving at the home, officers allegedly found a meth pipe and torch, along with other drugs, including uh, crack cocaine, oxycodone, methamphetamine, and Xanax. The woman at the house, according to the police report, told investigators that Frankie Richard had been paying her in roxycodone pills to have sex with other men. This account will sound eerily familiar to some of you. In 2007, the Jennings Police Department labeled Frankie a person of interest in the unexplained deaths of eight alleged prostitutes. The victims, Loretta Lynn Chason Lewis, 28, Kristen Gary Lopez, 21, Ernestine Marie Daniels Patterson, 30, Whitney Dubois, 26, Crystal Shea Benoisino, 24, Laconia Muggy Brown, 23, Brittany Gary, 17, and Nicole Guillory, 26. All of these girls knew each other. And according to the Jennings Police Department, between May 2005 and August 2009, at least seven of them walked the streets and worked for Frankie Richard. When doctors released Frankie from the hospital last September, police locked him in the Acadia Parish Jail under an $86,000 bond. Coincidentally, that's $1,000 more than the Crime Stoppers reward offered today for information on the Jennings homicides. Another coincidence, Frankie's arrest came on the day the Showtime Cable Network aired part one of Murder in the Bayou, a five-part documentary series on the Jennings Eight. Showtime based their documentary on a book by journalist Ethan Brown, who said Frankie Richard had relationships with six of the victims and that he was the last witness to see two of those victims alive. Murder in the Bayou retraces the stories of the eight women who lived near the small town of Jennings. Each died between May 2005 and August 2009, and someone dumped their bodies into the bayous and drainage cows along the rural back roads of Jefferson Davis Parish. However, the documentary pointed out, in 1998, near the same rural town, police found another woman, Sheila Como, savagely beaten and left for dead, hospitalized for a year before eventually succumbing to her injuries. Sheila's daughter, Lakeisha Myers, told Showtime cameras that even though the brutal attack occurred seven years before those of the Jennings Eight, she believes someone in Jefferson Davis Parish can connect her mother's death to the other victims. From 2005 to 2009, residents of that parish found the bodies of eight women in or around Jennings. All of the women moved in the same social circles and lived what Jefferson Davis Parish Sheriff Ricky Edwards deemed a high-risk lifestyle. That included drugs and prostitution, according to the sheriff. Lakeisha Myers believes her mother 
led a similar lifestyle and worked as a police informant, as did the other victims. Sheila Como died on March 19th, 1999. Loretta Lynn Chason Lewis died six years later, shortly after telling family members that the Jennings police arranged for her to spy on a drug deal for them. She was 28 years old. A fisherman found Loretta's nude body floating in a canal five miles outside of Jennings in the East Fork of the Grand Moriah off Louisiana Highway 1026. Although examiners reported finding significant amounts of cocaine and alcohol in her system, Loretta's cause of death remains unknown. On June 18, 2005, the body of 30-year-old Ernestine Marie Daniels Patterson turned up in a canal near Louisiana Highway 102, just five miles south of Loretta's location. Like Loretta's, examiners found drugs in her system. However, someone had also cut her throat and the wounds on her wrist suggested she fought violently before death. Police do classify Ernestine's case as a homicide. Police believe 21-year-old Kristen Gary Lopez died on March 18, 2007. Like Loretta, they found her nude body in water, wearing a single sock on her left foot. Decomposition, police say, prevented an official cause of death determination. A driver spotted 26-year-old Whitney Dubois' naked body hurriedly discarded on the side of a public road south of Welsh on May 12, 2007. Again, examiners found drugs in her system, but listed the cause of death as undetermined. On May 29, 2008, another driver found Laconia Chantel Muggy Brown, 23, near a roadside with her partially nude body doused in bleach. Like Ernestine, someone had slit Muggy's throat. She had seven slashes on her neck and another three cuts behind her right ear. On September 11, 2008, hunters reported a foul smell in a wooded area. Investigating, authorities found the skeletal remains of 24-year-old Crystal Shea Benoit Zeno. Due to the body's state of decomposition, examiners did not identify the skin and bones as crystals until November 7th. The examiner listed her cause of death as undetermined. A video camera recorded 17-year-old Brittany Gary at a dollar store on November 2nd, 2008. Two weeks later, police found her body near a highway in Jennings. In both cases, Crystal's and Brittany's a police officer claimed to have identified the victim by a tattoo. However, the medical examiner found both bodies too badly decomposed to determine cause of death. In 2007, while Frankie Richard was in jail on an unrelated rape charge, police reportedly questioned him regarding the murder of Ernestine Patterson, and later regarding the death of Kristen Lopez. In the Lopez case, they ultimately filed second-degree murder charges against Richard. Later, police dropped both the rape and second-degree murder charges when both witnesses against him recanted. 
one insisting that police investigators had coached her to lie. I've told them everything that I know, and that is not a lot when it comes to what happened to them girls, Frankie told reporters after his release. But God knows I didn't do that. Sheriff Ricky Edwards, today out of office, said in a recorded interview that Frankie knew the victims and met with two of them just days before they went missing. However, the sheriff said Frankie was in a rehabilitation center in Shreveport when one of the women died and locked in jail when one of the others went missing. In December 2008, 14 local, state, and national law enforcement agencies formed a multi-jurisdictional task force to investigate the Jennings deaths. Police hoped that establishing this team would ease the fears of Jefferson residents, assure the victims' families that Investigators had not forgotten about their loved ones. Unfortunately, the task force had the opposite effect. The team was barely a month old when the Louisiana State Police reportedly investigated three of its members. Ultimately, a state ethics board fined veteran detective Warren Gary $10,000 after Gary purchased a truck allegedly involved in one of the deaths. Later, Jennings PD fired another task force agent, Detective Paula Guillory, after she reportedly misplaced $3,000 confiscated in a raid. Interviewed on the Showtime documentary, Loretta Elizabeth Lacoste named the task force chief investigator in a wrongful death suit. She said Paris jail warden Terry Guillory was among those who shot and killed her boyfriend in his Lake Arthur home in June of 2007. That boyfriend, Stephen Thomas Gunter, was an informant on the police payroll. On August 19, 2009, seven hours after family members in Jefferson Davis Parish reported her missing, highway workers discovered the body of 26-year-old Nicole Jean Guillory at the bottom of a hill near Egan Ballpark in Acadia Parish. Nicole was the only victim found outside of Jefferson Davis Parish and the only victim killed after the creation of the task force. Examiners have released no official ruling on Nicole's cause of death. In his book, Ethan Brown cited three anonymous sources who said an elected U.S. representative hired some of the murdered women to perform sex acts at local motels. Brown described Frankie Richard as a pimp working out of the motel bars. In the Showtime documentary, Brown referred to the bar at the Boudreaux Inn as an ATM for withdrawing drugs and sex, and he described Frankie Richard as the bank manager. Last year, Toby Leger, one of the owners of the Boudreaux Inn, said most of the information in Brown's book and documentary regarding his businesses was false. It wasn't a coincidence this book came out in an election year, he said. The smear campaign served its purpose. The guy lost the election. In 2019, Frankie Richard admitted to Showtime interviews that he knew and worked with seven of the nine victims discussed in the documentary. But he insisted that he did not kill any of them. I had nothing to do with them girls' deaths, he later told me. 
They lost their life because they heard something, they saw something, and they knew something they wasn't supposed to know. Sunday, the Livingston Parish Coroner's Office told family members that Frankie Richard, who doctors had described as having chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, likely died of natural causes. Therefore, they said, no autopsy will be performed. Bayou Justice is a weekly true crime podcast and newspaper column featuring notable crime-related stories and focusing primarily on cold case files from South Louisiana. To support our work, please subscribe, like, and share, or purchase the book. Bayou Justice Southeast Louisiana Cold Case Crimes is available wherever paperbacks and ebooks are sold. Until next time, if you have information regarding an unsolved crime, please contact your local police agency, Crime Stoppers, or me, H.L. Arledge at Bayou Justice.